Hi, we are MSG Engineering, and we were tasked to build a small-scale seismic structure. This video is going to bring you along with us on our journey of the design process. The process consists of three main parts, the initial design geometry, optimizing column dimensions, and material choice. Initial design geometry. Our definition of aesthetics facilitates the creation of an elegant design that is not just aesthetically pleasing but also satisfies the engineering conditions while meeting the requirements of efficiency and economy. The column of the structure is trapezoidal, increasing its efficiency by using less material. It is tapered gradually to prevent drastic differences in stiffness at any point of the structure. The cross-sectional shapes of plates are chosen such that, for the top plate, minimum area is met. For the bottom plate, the holes are aligned with the shaking board. The thickness of the top plate is chosen such that it does not fail through tearing and bending due to the attached weights. The thickness of the bottom plate is chosen such that it can be modelled as a fixed base. The column height is then chosen to meet the minimum height requirement. Optimizing column dimensions. We model the column as a cantilever structure fixed at the bottom, with loading applied at the top. Considering the variation in bending moment of the column with the greatest at the bottom and weakest at the top, the column is expected to have the most material at the base and least at the top, hence it is expected to be a tapered column. This structure is modelled as a one-noded structure with a fixed end base where the top mass is assumed to be the attached weights, the top plate and the top half of the column. A MATLAB code is then run to analyse thousands of designs against three dynamic and three structural requirements. Material choice. Two types of materials were made available. Both materials were used in the analysis and ABS was chosen over PLA due to achieving a higher strength to weight ratio. The final structure and its dimensions are illustrated here. Description of testing. The structure was attached to a shaking table that is Arduino controlled and monodirectional. Masses were attached to the top of the structure by bolts and nuts. Two ADXL accelerometers were attached at the structure's top and base to measure the acceleration. Videos of the structure face-on were taken during the test and crosshairs are marked at the top and bottom to allow us to visually observe the movement of the structure more accurately. Two tests were conducted on the structure, one at 1.5Hz and another at 3Hz. Two methods were used to find the displacement of the structure. The first method is video analysis through the software Tracker. The second method is to integrate the acceleration data from the test to find the velocity, then again to find the displacement. The steps in the double integration of the data are shown here. This table summarizes the principles of the two methods, which give rise to the results of the two tests as shown here. Both methods of analysis provide different displacement results, of which displacement from the acceleration data was significantly higher. This is due to its higher sampling rate, which generates more noise or undesired data. Consequently, more filtering and baseline corrections are needed to process the displacement data, further compounding any errors in the process. Using the 1.5Hz tracker data, the recorded displacement is seen to be far greater than the predicted displacement, which is caused by the overestimation of the structure's natural frequency. These are the possible causes for the discrepancy in the natural frequency values, causing the amplification factor and displacement to be underestimated. To counter this, an adjusted amplification factor was used, giving rise to a reasonably adjusted value as shown here. Here are some key takeaways which we have gotten out of this project. Firstly, displacement values obtained from both the tracker and the acceleration data are not often used in practice because they are less reliable. This is demonstrated by the poor estimates of displacement we saw earlier. Taking the 1.5Hz steady state as an example, we saw that using the acceleration data to obtain the displacement values would require baseline correction and filtering. Otherwise, the results do not make sense, as seen here. However, even with the baseline correction and filtering, the displacement values are still far from what we saw from the tracker. To be more specific, it's a difference of 150%. And let's not forget that the tracker also has a certain degree of inaccuracy associated with calibration errors and field of view errors. So we shouldn't trust the tracker displacement data entirely. For all these reasons, 
practicing engineers usually look at acceleration data more than the displacement data in seismic design. Next, we have the principles behind 3D printing by acknowledging imperfections during the printing process of the model. For example, adding an additional 1mm to the design hole diameters to make sure the bolts fit into the holes. From this project, we have acknowledged that real-life design involves many unknown parameters and uncertainties, including non-linear effects. Let's recall that our design only considers first-order effects. As engineers for the future, it is important for us to note down the assumptions of any design, including those underlying the design codes that we may be using, which makes learning from the basis of first principles extremely important. And that will conclude the video. We hope that you've enjoyed watching. Thank you.